I'm, I'm, I'm going through a canyon. Uh, I'm on Mars. I'm flying over Mars. I don't know what my altitude would be. I'm probably at about uh, a loose scale. Yeah, you lose scale actually because there is no reference. We right. have to have a land rover or something. So right. Can... Oh my gosh! But it's following. It's following the head moon. Yeah. What? what? Yeah, they wish they had this stuff. I don't know why, you know. They should have it, you know, much better than we do, but curiously they don't. Be very afraid. Yeah, that's a great tour. <laughs> uh, we're seeing uh, living with gigabits. <laughs> this is high def. And now science has to live up to the definition. We'll see if that really comes to pass. It probably will. New instrumentation typically means new science. This is new instrumentation for all sorts of things, especially communication. Well, as part of the uh, ever-changing fire landscape, uh, not only did we try this uh, design challenge and a few other new things this year that we've never done before, uh, but we also are happy to have the BBC joining us this year, and uh, not only to do interviews offline, but online. And so Steve Evans has uh, come to us from London to uh, help us make hot spots a little hotter. This thing's called a hot spot because it's, I think it's because it's where the hot thought is, it's where you feel things getting a bit hotter before breakthroughs. For me, it was the, it was the opening uh, speech by Craig Venter. He was so exciting about the future of biology and how we're breaking frontiers and how we're learning things that if only kids could understand this and instead of what they get in normal biology, I think that they would be excited and we wouldn't have a shortage of people going into the sciences. Thank you, I agree. And, and the follow-up the next day with, with Janine was, was wonderful too in terms of the biomimicry mm -hmm. and looking at the natural world for technology solutions. Um, did you see anything there that would help us in Project Inkwell? I think that, that what we can look for and that's, that's a very good question. What we should look for is natural learning systems. Um, hi, I'm Steve Evans from the BBC. Tell me how we're learning from nature. Well, it's a field called biomimicry, and it's literally when you have a design challenge. Uh, instead of going to another human, you go, to, uh, you go outside, and you start to see how life, life is. Uh, you want to make a solar cell? You go and you investigate leaves. That's biomimicry. Uh, I'm Mark Anderson, and uh, we are at the Halo Room in uh, San and Rancho Bernardo um, near San Diego. We are coming from the Future in Review Conference 2007, Fire 5, which we've just concluded. It's a Friday afternoon, and we are talking to our various friends in Singapore and Corvallis. And uh, we've got some fire 
people here with us and uh, to show how this works. We'll go back and forth uh, to another room here uh, uh, at this facility. And I see Jeb Terry over there. Jeb, how did you enjoy fire? Uh, it was a uh, it was a mind-boggling affair. <laughs> Dazed and confused. There's a uh, fire hose of, of uh, challenging information and uh, uh, lots of stimuli. So we'll probably take uh, a few days to try to assimilate it all. But uh, it's been uh, all that it was billed to be. So congratulations, by the way, on a, on a very successful conference. Well, the Fire Starter Program here at Fire 5 allows young companies like Altair Nano to rub shoulders with a lot of people who have insight and experience in bringing technology and trying to forecast where future technology might impact uh, the world. And it gives us a chance to meet with people and to experience uh, their views of where the world and technology may be going. It was a pleasant surprise right after my presentation this morning. I was uh, uh, approached by the BBC reporter Stephen Evans. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an wow. interview impromptu and in fact later this afternoon he said uh, we're going to air your program tomorrow. Wow. Which was a big surprise because it reaches what 180, 150 million people. 150 million people. Wow. Fantastic. I told my kids and they said, Dad, you're going to be on BBC? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Quite a surprise. You deserve yes. it. Oh, well, thank you. You deserve it. That's why you're here. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you. you. The highlight of today was definitely this session for me. Was seeing some of the things that we're talking about in the media industry really come to life. And um, I think it's, you know, there are a lot of dimensions of what we just saw that, that that he didn't talk about that are very important. You know, just not transporting reels of film around the world. Right? Something, yeah, yeah. something that's that's extremely expensive and very difficult for a lot of the films to do. So the the future of cinema itself going to be in much more dedicated, technologically focused uh, auditoriums, where I believe the sound, the size. You know the scope of the of the video bandwidth that we're using is going to really make it much more dynamic to be in the theater in the future. What have been uh, some of some of the reactions uh, to uh, to this kind of uh, uh, technology and, and putting it into uh, such a beautiful uh, automobile? Yeah. Well, you can imagine that at a conference like this, um, focus on technology. Mm -hmm. This is obviously you know a, a big piece of the technology marketplace right now and especially you know we are positioned in Silicon Valley where mm -hmm. there's a lot of innovation in the space and historically you know a, a, a spot that's been in kind of computers and, and, and power electronics for um, applications like that we bring it to a car and it suddenly has this excitement value that Absolutely. is increased and you can you can see the beautiful styling it really makes people excited and, Absolutely. you know here at the conference we've had like you said people who have already reserved the car come up and you know, talk about their experiences and um, people that we've recognized who mm -hmm. have visited us in San Carlos at our headquarters there. Yeah. So it's uh, it's garnered quite a bit of attention. Absolutely, I can even see people here from the street coming in, and we had one guy from a uh, local Navy base, it looks like, yep. who was in to uh, to check it out and had a good amount of information already on it. Yeah, he uh, was a, he was an expert. Absolutely. Now, what are what are the, some of some of the um, from a, from a technology standpoint? What are the uh, what are, what are some of the uh, the aspects that makes this car? That much uh, more more interesting from uh, you know moving into the next generation of uh, of vehicles. What are some of the things that sets this uh, car aside? Sure. Well, first of all, it combines efficiency with performance. Mm -hmm. So the the one of the biggest wow factors of this car is that it goes from zero to sixty miles an hour and in four seconds flat. Wow. So it's an incredible acceleration, and then it also has an equivalent of about 135 miles per gallon. Wow. And and obviously the car uses no gasoline, so that's a that's an equivalency factor, but it gives you an idea of the efficiency of the drivetrain. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's very much um, kind of a, a figurehead for what the new technology can afford. And as we're moving into this age of kind of post-traditional um, post uh, transportation,